Welcome to today's talk. The um, title is Chan, Clarity and Relaxation. So when we look at these two words, it's quite obvious that, oh, this is talking about practice. Uh, especially in the practice of silent illumination. But there are people who ask, what exactly is clarity? And what, what is relaxation? Well, just pretty simply, clarity means you're not sleepy. You, you are awake. Your mind is not in a chaotic state, uh, some kind of muddy, muddy in your mind. So that is quite simple. But clarity could be deeper and deeper. It depends on how clear our mind is. And uh, what happened if uh, I meditate and I feel very sleepy? Well, usually we suggest that you open your eyes widely. You don't even blink your eyes and uh, tuck in your chin so that you feel a little bit more awake and then sit up straight. Or even worse, even more than that, if you feel more sleepy, then you should kneel, kneel up on the mat or even on the hard floor. And that will make it will make you awake. Or sometimes we could even pinch our ears. Now this one is easy. Many people know how to do it. It's pinch your ears. When you pinch your ears, you will be well awake. But you need to really pinch it hard. Pinch it hard. but it could be deeper and deeper, okay? Now, what about um, relaxation? Usually we suggest that do not exert any efforts on your muscles. Physically, your body, the entire body will be relaxed. And uh, you can check yourself from head to toe to see you know, what part of the body tends up and loosen up those parts. Parts that are easily um, tense up as you know, the eyes area and then the stomach and also our shoulders. So you just take those parts, check them and make, make sure that you don't exert any effort there then your muscle will be relaxed and your physical body will be relaxed. And what about your mind? Well, in, in meditation, our attitude is that we are content. And our Shifu said, or our Master Seng Yen said, just have an attitude of you're on vacation. If you're on vacation, then not much to do, or you don't have to be in a hurry to do anything at all. Well, this is this is about the practice. But take a look at this word clarity. It could mean something else. How clear. 
mind. All people may ask, did he know he was, what he's doing? Are you sure that's what you're doing? So the question here referring to, are you clear enough of what you're doing? Or do you know what you're doing? You have to be sure. This is an example of someone's life that they are very clear of what they're doing. Uh, there was a famous um, forensic scientist. His name is, is Henry Lee. He lived in uh, Connecticut and he involved in many criminal cases where he's, he solved many of those cases. And because of that, he was famous. But he started out from Taiwan um, and then he was in, in the police, uh, I think police school. learn about this science of forensic scientist. And, and after he came to the United States, he continued with his training. And afterward, he worked for many, many cases. One of the, one of the most famous cases is the case of O.J. Simpson years ago that everything is, is coming for if you want to prove that person is a criminal or not. Then you have to have something to prove. And the case of O.J. Simpson is that he did not do the killing. But if you don't have enough evidence, then you cannot accuse the person as a criminal. That was on TV, you know, like almost like a really, really episode on the TV um, by those years. And he had been like this his whole life okay. and he tried to this is uh, Henry Chao Yuli so we see that he's very clear of what he's doing not only He's clear of what he's doing, but also the whole life, you can see that he has gone through many difficult times, but he's very stable. Very stable. You know, usually someone that is not stable is just their life up and down, very high and, and, and go down, but not the case with um, Henry Lee. Another case is this vendor who sells vegetables. Her name is Chen Shu Ju. Chen Shu Ju. She was a vegetable uh, vendor, but she's a great philanthropist, he, she, she collect money and donated to many organizations. She's from Taiwan. And uh, in, 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 in Taitung, she just sell vegetable in the market. And because of the way she doing it, she donated 
too many organizations that she won a lot of uh, prizes. Reader Digest has honored her for the winner of 2010 Asian of the Year, the personal Asian of the Years. And also, also she, she was elected by Time magazine. Uh, 100, 100, 100 for the one of the 100 for the year 2010 as in the category of heroes. And she was also one of the 48 heroes in the Phobias magazines. And she also won the uh, uh, Max Sai Sai Award winner. But she was just a very ordinary people who sells vegetable in the market. And she said that money serves its purpose only when it's used for those who are in need. She's very happy to help others. That's very important. Now you can see her life. Now she's over 70, you know, more than 70, maybe, maybe 80 or something. Her life is, is very stable again. And she knows what she's doing. So the clarity is right there. And the so called stability is there. This ability brings you the life is not up and down. You can say it is calm. Right? And we could say that she's, she's relaxed in doing so. Another story that I'd like to share with you, there was a manager in the restaurant and uh, he is very helpful and he get along with his colleagues in the restaurants with his subordinates. One day, the restaurant was robbed. A few guys came in with a gun and robbed the restaurant. And this manager wanted employees. He was stay, let the employees stay behind and he was, you know, confronting, confronting the, the robbers. And he got shot. But, and he got seriously injured and they had to rush him to the hospital and because of the injury he could not really you know fill out you know, all the forms in the hospital because they have to know you know you know the blood type what is it that you're allergic to and, and all these things before they could do anything. So the nurse would come and say, what is it that you're allergic to? And you know what he said? I'm allergic to bullet. And once he said that, you know, the
team of the nurses and doctors and try to. I really like this story because he's really relaxed. And not only that he, he's relaxed, but he has, has the sense of humor. And it's clear, clearly known, knowing that, yeah, of course, I'm allergic to bullet, nothing else. <laughs> So you can see that even in a very critical condition situations, that this this manager, it's 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 so cool. Cool, <laughs> relax. I'd like to share with you another story of Master Xu in Empty Cloud, a very famous time. Contemporary, <clears throat> he lived to 100 years old. And uh, one day there was a few senior monk visit him. So at night they, they sleep in the, on the bunk bed together. And when they get up in the morning, they're complaining. Oh, they were snoring badly at night. I could really and messes throw their body, and then break the leg of a flea. And the, the flea was dropped to the ground and it cried. You see how clear the mind of the Chan Master is a flea and how vivid it's a sound that the, the, the crying of, of a flea, you could, you could hear it. That's amazing. So again, relax and clarity is there. It's right there. One time I was uh, riding on a subway with Master Renjun. Uh, she's, he passed, passed away already. Um, he, he has very good practice. And then he get into the, the, the subway, you know, there's a seat for him to sit down. He just closed his eye. He, he did not bother to look around, open the eyes, look at there and there and there, but just close his eye. Interesting. But it was clearly, no, okay. When it's time to arrive and get up. but he was not disturbed by the environment at all. Well, he really know how, you know, what he's doing. And Master Ji Cheng, we, when we were in Taiwan and, um, we were in the intensive retreat. I was supposed to have interview for participants and also Ji Xiang Fa Si. Ji Xiang Fa Si is already enlightened, right? And uh, I had a, di a dialogue with Ji Xiang Fa Si. I said that. When I have interview, I have to really listen carefully to what the participant is saying. And because of that, there's there are many people. Um, it take up my, my energy. I feel tired afterward. And you know what Master Ji Cheng Basit replied? Oh, he said, oh, 
So just, just hear it. Just hear it. Just hear what, what they say. Thing. Hearing is different with listening. He hearing, you don't, you don't make effort, but you hear because your eyes are always open. But if you have to listen, then you take more attention. Very simple, a very simple answer of telling me. Just relax. <laughs> that is something that 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 is a lesson lesson that I I learned from him. Oh, just hear what they say. Very uh, very usual uh, words, very common words to say that. One time, when I was in Hong Kong, in Hong Kong, there are a lot of subways. And from station to station, sometimes you have to walk a long way because they, the mall, there's so many malls around and then they connected one to the other. So I take the opportunity of walking meditation, just normal walk. And then along the two sides of the wall, there are banners, there are posters, you name it, there's so many. Museum, movie, uh, dance performance, all these posters, and uh, um, some other some some other performance, all oh, oh, like and advertising. A lot of people, but I took the opportunity just for walking meditation. A lot of people walk back and forth. Just keep my mind open. And then walk. And I thought, wow, this is a really good place to do walking meditation. You don't have to be bothered by so many things around. But just do just 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 do your work. Walking meditation. That's become a practice. And talking about our teacher, Mr. Sung Yen, when he was a novice monk and his teacher told him that you better do prostration every day. And then he was doing it. Doing it for, if I believe it, probably around three, three months or so, every day, 500, 500 prostrations early in the morning. And before that, his mind was very murky. He cannot really remember, cannot uh, remember all this chanting from the sutras to do, even to do evening and morning service. But after three months, somehow, his mind opens up, it becomes smarter. And he got benefit from the practice. And then of course, later on, he learned more about Buddhism and he has a vow to, to spread, to share this precious teachings to everyone. And they continue on with his vow like this. And then, you know, now we, we see that organized, uh, Damajam organization in Taiwan is very big. And then in America, we have different chapters. 
And this is all because of his vow. And again, it's very clear of what he's doing. What is it that he's, he's walking, is his path with this life? Clarity is there. Of course, relaxation is there. If not, then one is not calm enough to carry on with the difficult task of the day. Another story that I'd like to share with you is that um, in the Tang Dynasty, Master Hongren and he is the fifth patriarch. There was a monk named Hui Ming. Before he left home, he was a general. So he must be uh, full of strength. And at that time, Master Hongren already passed the rope and the bow to represent the transmission of the Chan school, the Chan lineage, down to Master Hui Neng. And Master Hui Neng at that time was still a lay person, but Hui Ming was already a monk. And because Hui Neng at that time, he was not known yet. He was just a, people consider him a, a, a barbarian, you know, from the South. So they think that why give it to a barbarian from the South? And the person is even a lay person. So they chase out on him. And after, I think, one, more than one month of chasing, Hui Ming got to the forest and encountered with Hui Neng. So what Master Hui Neng did was he took the bow and the rope, put on the boulder, let him take it. And Hui Ming found that, ah, oh, this is something, something so easy. If I just take it. So reflect on it, he changed his mind. He said, I'm here for the Dharma, not for the material things, not for the bow and not for the rope. And then, the Hui Neng came out that time he was hiding in the bush. Came out, said that, okay, since you're here for Dharma, then sit down and discard all the thoughts that concerning about the outside environment not to give rise to any good and bad thoughts. And at that moment of no good and no bad thoughts, see for yourself of your original face. Hui Ming was able to do so. He was able to do so. It's very, very important. Put down all the thoughts concerning whatever that's outside of whatever that's about the environment. And 
not to think of good, not to think of bad, or not to think of good, not to think of evil. At that moment, he realized his original face. You can say that, yeah, at that moment, he got enlightened. So, first of all, is that he was able to discard all other wandering thoughts, which is very important. That you could say that to settle the mind, to calm the mind, and the mind being clear and relaxed. And one was able to realize one's Buddha nature. At the moment of putting down all the wandering thoughts, is the moment of enlightenment. Two, Master Hui, Hui Ming. Again, clarity is there. Relaxation, definitely it's there. Another story is a story about this story. You probably already heard about it, but um, I just say it anyway. It's called the story of the wild fox. So Bai Zhang, Mr. Bai Zhang taught. Every time he taught, there was an old man who was within the assembly and to listen to a Dharma talk. So many times already, one day when the Dharma talk was finished, the old man stayed behind and come to Master Bai Zhang. Bai Zhang said, who is it that stand before me? The old man said, the old man said, well, I'm not a human. In the time of ancient Kashyapa Buddha, I was drowning here on this mountain. A student came and asked me, does a great does a great person, uh, does a person of great practice still fall into cause and effect or not? I reply that he does not fall into cause and effect. Because of that, I was reborn as a fox for 500 lifetimes. 500 lifetimes as a fox. Now, Master, could you help me with a turning phrase so that to be Release me from being a wild fox. So he asked, does a person of great practice still fall into cause and effect or not? Bai Chang answered, he is not deluded about cause and effect. He is not del deluded about cause and effect. So he is not deluded very clearly about cause and effect. Right there, clarity, right understanding. 
giving the right answer. And at this word, the old man was greatly awakened. And he bowed and said that. Now I could shed this fox body behind on the other side of the mountain. Please, Master, give me the funeral service of a dead monk. So, Bai Zhang really do that. And he lead the whole assembly to find to find, to go there and find the fox, the dead fox, and bury it in the service of a monk. And everybody was like puzzled, what happens? Now, it seems like it's finished, right? And that night, Bai Chang came to the Dharma Hall and related to related the full story of what happened. When finishing the story, one of his disciples, Huang Bo, he already enlightened. He came and ask a question. One wrong re reply, and this old man was condemned to be a fox for 500 lifetimes. That's okay, right? But the following one is that if his reply had been correct, then what? Now, this is very interesting here. If he reply had been correct, then what? So, if you do something wrong, you're condemned just because you tried wrong for 500 lifetimes. If you said it correctly, then what? And Bai Zhang said, come here and I'll tell you. So Huang Bo approached him. What happened was that Huang Bo, his disciple, gave Bai Zhang a good slap on the face. And then what happened was that Bai Zhang clapping his hand. I knew the barbarian, barbarian's beard was red. And I didn't know that red was the beard of the barbarian. Now, this, this reply is very interesting. Now, this, this barbarian here in Chinese, it, it here referring to what? Not really barbarian. Referring to the fox. I think the fox must be like the, in America, red fox. So red fox had, had hair that is red, right? So he said, I knew because that fox, his hair is red. But now even more that I know that all oh, red is the beer of a, of a barbarian. Well, actually, barbarian is the same thing. Well, he was 
is using this as a pun to to show that in one day, one day, one person get enlightened, the, the wild fox, the monk get enlightened. And then at nine, another person get enlightened. That's why he's clapping his hands. You may be feeling puzzled. What's going on? <laughs> the most puzzled part is why Huang Po gave Bai Zhang a slap on the face. When I read this story, I thought Bai Zhang gave Huang Po a slap on the face because I think it's nonsense question. Why have this question? You should just give him a good slap on the face. <laughs> well, anyway, that's what happens. <clears throat> For this story, <laughs> so now coming to this is that. Actually, for the genuine enlightened person, the clarity and the relaxations is always there. It is not like us. So what about our practice, our own practice? Are we clear of what we're doing? Or are we still in the state of not clear, a state of unknown? Well, we are on the path, right? We walk this path, we know. So have confidence in what we are doing. We are walking this way. And of course, the practice, we encounter different difficulties. And then we may need to find the so-called virtuous friends or good teachers that we could follow. And at last, there is a poem by Master Wu Men Hui Kai the, of the Song Dynasty that I'd like to share with you. There are hundreds of flowers in spring, moon in autumn cool bleeds in summer and winter snow. So the four seasons, you have flowers, you have moon, you have cool bleeds and you have snow. If there aren't any trivial matters in your mind, then it is the best season. the whole year round. And this is for you. Okay. So, uh, if you have any questions, Now it's open for question. You may turn on your camera. Uh, thank you, Fashi Amitofo. 
And Pusas, if you have any questions, uh, you can type in the chat box or you uh, please raise, raise your hands and we'll unmute you. Thank you. So the, I think the story of the, uh, probably the, 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 uh, the two story of the masses, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> it's for you to ponder. The other one is more uh, easy to understand, right? Uh, Amitofo, Wendy Pusa, uh you can ask your question. Um, thank you, Fash. Uh, my question is, uh, I try to relax. So I follow all the Dharma talks and go to all the retreats. But I'm wondering, maybe I'm stressing myself out with all this. Uh, <laughs> just a thought. Maybe I'm, uh, can you enlighten me on that? Thank you. Maybe you try too much, too hard. Right. Don't try too hard, okay? Thank you. <laughs> okay, another one, raise hands. I'm going for Jiren Pusa. Could you please unmute yourself? Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Master. Just, um, I have ever just uh, take part in the retreat for seven days in, in Hong Kong. And the uh, Hong Kong supervisor, Chang Zhan Master, yeah, very, I heard his uh, teaching. He said that just uh, when he uh, just uh, teaching in Hong Kong because uh, Hong Kong people, they are more, uh, more just, uh, they, they didn't more relax because they are very busy, okay? The temple is very busy in Hong Kong. But the people in Taiwan, when he teach uh, the meditation in Taiwan, the retreat for, retreat for a few days, maybe, he will just uh, explain to more c clear. Okay, he said because the Taiwan people maybe they are uh, just uh, maybe they are more relaxed, but uh, they need more, uh, more, more, more clear. So, but uh, sometimes I hear the the uh, some master teacher uh, our our venerable or master they, they're teaching. They said maybe relax is uh, more if uh, relax and the clear, which is more. <laughs> So in the beginning, which is the most important, maybe is we start from uh, relax first. So how, how do you think about it, the master? Just uh, which one is important or it depends on the situation by, by the people of Mitovo? Well, actually both are necessary. But for some people, they need more relax because they're too tense then they have to be, uh, they will need to put more emphasis on the relaxation. And sometimes people are too relaxed, then you, you need to put emphasis on the clarity. These two things together, because if you are really exerting yourself to be very clear, you just become tense up, all right? So these two things need to work together, actually. Supposedly, the practice of Chan is these two things simultaneously should be there. So that is exactly the balancing of the clarity and relaxation, okay? Go in Fashe. Thank you for the talk. Good morning. Good morning. Um, uh, I've heard you talk about the parrot uh, putting out fire in the forest with a little beak, whatever little water. Do your best. Mm -hmm. And um, do the best you can to put fires out in this situation now. And while there is one, uh, 
this one seems like the the fox did the best in that moment uh but the wrong understanding cost 500 lifetimes of being a fox um so there's a contradiction that's making me like one i don't know if the fox did the best they could in that moment to answer that question but it seems a little I don't know, 500 lifetimes of being a fox. That's harsh. <laughs> harsh. Um, and uh, which makes sharing do the best you can. And when you share something in the Dharma, I don't know if I'm a fox right now, but if you do that, uh, it's making <laughs> it, it'll, it'll. He's a fox. I'm a fox probably, but then where I'm going with this, <laughs> it makes you back off instead of. <laughs> it's such a uh, conundrum okay you, yeah uh, uh, how do you okay help me understand that okay the story of the parrot is the right motivation you know seeing Put it like this, you see the world in chaos, and our ability is very small. We can't change whatever that is really on fire, but still, we could do something mm. to help, and that is the right motivation mm. right there. Now, about the, the answer. This story here referring to the right view, which is very important, and especially the right view about causes and effect, causes and conditions, the so-called traveling chains, the so-called uh, impermanent suffering, no self, and emptiness, those are the very important guidelines. Mm -hmm. you, you, could, you, could, you, could, you could say something wrong in detail about certain things, but the main guidelines of the teachings, if you say it wrong, then it's going to be affected to the people later, especially of a good practitioners. So that story telling us that, it, you know, we cannot fooling around, but, you know, like thinking that we are great and then, you know, saying, saying something that is, is, that is, that is strong, but that is very important to have it correctly. You see that the answer from Bai Zhang is clearly no, not deluded. about cause and effect, rather than the one is that, you know, not falling into the cause and effect. It's, it's right there, it's very, very much different. And that, that story that tells us, you know what, we have to have the right view. The right view is very important right here. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. May, may I ask uh, more? May I ask for you to repeat the poem, the, uh, the poem at the end that you recited, the womb, womb, womb. The flowers bloom, uh, the cool breeze. Uh, Boom, yeah. <laughs> A hundred flower in spring, moon in autumn, cool breeze, in summer and snow in winter. If there's no trivial things that clinging on your mind, that is the best season. Uh, I missed that last part. Thank you. Thank That's you. important because whole year, you know, like four season will be your best, your best season. That's the point. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Pashi.
Bonsoir, Mr. Tofu. So my question is uh, uh, the clarity and relaxation in daily life. And then because I'm interested in sinus illumination, how we can apply both relax and clear and also sinus illumination in daily life that still we can still function normally. I think there's more practices that is, should be done off the cushion, not on the cushion. Well, actually the title clarity and relaxation that is from uh, silent illumination practice. Clarity referring to illumination and relaxations referring to silence. The, the principles are right there. So you just do everything with a clear mind. But now the clear mind here doesn't mean that you have to exert effort. You know, you just, just keep yourself clear or you awake, you're not sleepy. And we started out simply from there, knowing what we are doing, knowing what we are saying, knowing what we are behaving, yet try not to be waver, our mind not to be waver and connected with fixations. And that you already practice in everything that we do in our daily life. Thank you, Vasu. Okay. Thank you. I'm going to you can ask your question again. Okay, uh, thanks, thanks, uh, thanks, Vasi. Uh, just uh, like, like Ron Chen, uh, he, he mentioned about the, the silent illumination. Just uh, when I, uh, I have ever taken part in the silent illumination retreat for seven days. And um, just uh, maybe I, I have ever just, uh, uh, maybe uh, just a uh, Shifu have ever mentioned just uh, um, the Hua to is more tighter and uh, uh, a way for more tighter, the measure for more tighter. And the silent illumination maybe is more relaxed. Okay, so so when we do the uh, the silent illumination, uh, sometimes we call it uh, the master for no master, right? Uh, the wu fa zi fa. So could I just uh, consider as just uh, um uh, the wu fa zi fa? Could I consider as just um, if I, because in the silent illumination, sometimes uh, just uh, Shifu have ever uh, introduced some uh, several measures. Maybe uh, the listening, the uh, sound of the listening, or the experience of your whole body, and uh, so some several. So can I think, can I think or consider just the silent illumination the measure for no, no measure? Just uh, every measure is a measure. Could I think uh, this way <laughs> or maybe it's wrong? Okay, thank you. Well, the method of no method uh, is not easy to, to, to apply or to practice right from the beginning. If your mind is open, if your mind is simple, it's possible that you could use it right away, but in general, it will not work. So we have to start from the very just the breath and move on to just sitting only, and then move on, move on until you're really ready. Then the method of no method, actually is no method. It doesn't mean that any method that you could use. That doesn't mean that. At that time, you don't really need to do anything that you will have to do something. The you is not there, but everything is clear and you just respond to whatever that's going on. So if your foundation is not good enough, you won't be able to do it. So that is what it means by method of no method. And then when 
talk about this method of the Huato is already there is the method and the method is called Huato method. Two different approaches. So don't mix up that, oh, I can use anything. All right. 